The action is pouring in on the news of Harry Belafonte's death at the age of 96. The award-winning actor, singer, and activist died in his home in the Upper West Side. Over the course of his amazing, amazing life, he has said again and again what he hopes is to be remembered for the most, the most for his legacy of fighting for social justice. Sandy Kenyon joins us now with more on his amazing life and his impact on civil rights. Sandy? Shalene David, his success as an entertainer was surpassed by his impact as an activist. Harry Belafonte was the first solo performer to sell a million albums and led a calypso craze to the top of the charts in the 1950s. Yeah! Harry Belafonte sang his way into the hearts of millions beginning in the 1940s, gaining the nickname King of Calypso for his take on traditional Caribbean folk music. But he was also a gifted actor, debuting on Broadway in 1953 and winning a Tony for his very first performance. Belafonte was a handsome and charismatic concert attraction who did his part to end the segregation then so common in the country. Cut that out. He was the first black leading man of the movies, a few years later becoming the first black American to win an Emmy and to produce a TV show. But Belafonte's greatest contribution came in the civil rights movement. He donated money and lent his famous voice to the cause. Dr. King called me on the phone one day. Malcolm X knocked at the door one day. Nelson Mandela, he and I had an exchange of letters while he was in prison. And just these things kept emerging, and each time I saw opportunity to become involved. Born in New York City in 1927 to immigrant parents, Belafonte spent much of his early life in Jamaica. Seeing his parents struggle left a lasting impression and fueled his passion for social justice. I and my brothers and sisters were the first to be educated. As one of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s closest confidants, he helped plan the March on Washington in 1963. As artists and as human beings, we rejoice in the knowledge that human experience has no color. And even into his 90s, the UNICEF Goodwill Ambassador continued to promote civil rights and peace. And although I took a lot of heat for what I did then, if history is any, is any measure, then I'd probably wind up on the right side of the equation. Surely that's right. I met him just once early in my career when he did good by sounding great for the We Are the World recording that raised tens of millions of dollars for African famine relief back in 1985. Decades later, what I remember best is his humility. Belafonte was a celebrity and a performer who had transcended show business to become a moral beacon. And yet he spoke softly and with such great kindness. He was always eloquent, but ultimately, who Harry Belafonte was as a human being, well, that spoke loudest of all. David Trilling.